everybody. So you bought your, your Panama Esmeralda. The, uh, it's called the Enero this year. It's their best lot from their auction. Uh, this is one of the most valuable coffees of the world, and you want to get the most out of it. So uh, I'm here to kind of guide you through what I would do in my house if I bought this very valuable coffee and I wanted to show it to everybody in my house or just myself. I wanted to show it at its peak, at its best, um, and have, have everyone be as impressed by it as they, as they really need to be. Because this is one impressive coffee. I mean, it's got big, big flavors. And uh, here we go. I, and, you know, I, I actually go through this at my house whenever I have people over and I have one of these crazy coffees. Um, they all expect the best from me. I say, oh, well, Will's opening his bag of coffee. It's got to be amazing. And I, and I get really stressed because they're expecting something really big. So I want to meet expectations. Uh, so what I do is all these steps to make sure that the expectations are met. Uh, and they're very high expectations, just like you have of this coffee. Uh, so I'm going to take you through it. What I've got in front of me is I've got a plunger. I'm expecting you'll probably have a plunger at home. Um, uh, so let's make it in a, plung in a plunger today. Uh, I've heated the plunger up. It's very hot, <laughs> um, which is good because uh, after you add the coffee and the, the new hot water, you want that hot water to stay stable at a, at a, at a perfect extraction temperature for as long as possible. And if the uh, plunger is preheated, it stays on that temperature for longer. And you get that 93, 94 degree perfect extraction temperature for the whole five minutes of extraction kind of thing. So that's fantastic. So I'm heating that up. Uh, I've also invested in some some filtered water. I know it's a bottled plastic, plastic bottle of water. You know, that's not ideal, but like when, you're, when you've got coffee of this caliber, you wanna make sure the water is right. Um, and if you don't have filtered water in your house, you might wanna just buy filtered water for this particular coffee because you wanna get the most out of it. Um, and we've gone through a whole bunch of waters from the supermarket. We went to Woolies the other day and we bought all the whole range of filtered waters and tried them all out, and it turned out that Mount, Mount Franklin delivered the best results. It's got the best minerality um, and, the, and the best pH balance for this coffee. So I'd recommend maybe buying some Mount Franklin, Franklin for just this coffee. I've also got my, uh, my kettle. The kettle, it's got a, a temperature setting on it. So I'm gonna set it to 95 degrees. I'm actually gonna throw the water in there now and get it started. Oof, there's water still in that. So I'll pour it out. That's my tap water from previously. I'll make sure it's out. I only have the good water going in. And this is one liter, so that's just about exactly enough for this one liter plunger. There we go. Put the whole thing in. Again, you're probably not gonna do this for every coffee you make, but just for this very valuable coffee, you want to get the best results, so you got to use the best water you can find. All right, I'll pop that on and get it started. There you go, it's going to 95 degrees. While that's heating up, I'll get my grinder ready. This is very stressful, this part. Um, I usually use this, use this grinder for uh, espresso, but today I'm going to use it for my plunger, so I had to reset the grind. And to reset the grind, I've still got some coffee in there from my previous coffee, which I'm gonna to use to set the grind. Let me see. And just gotta grab one of these cups here. And the grind setting was around like number nine for this grinder was over here. I've actually spent some time and I found out the uh, ideal setting is over here. It's like grind setting 40 which is really in between what it says is a plunger and what it says is espresso. Uh, I never use the plunger grind for plunger. It's just way too chunky. So I found, we found that this works better for extraction. So I'm gonna grind it up, let me see. And show you what grind you want. Okay, so again, I didn't use the expensive, the, uh, the expensive coffee, the, the beautiful coffee to find my grind. I used another coffee to get the grind right. And, uh, and this is the grind here. I've actually, I found that if I put my finger on it and hold it like that, and then I tap it a bit, then you can see, can you see that? 
that's the kind of <laughs> grinds you want, you know, if that comes into focus. But it's uh, it sticks to your finger. It comes off after a tap, but you can see it's like little squares, but it's not really chunky. I find if you go too coarse on the grinds, not much sticks to your finger. But if you get it just not, you know, finer and finer to a better place, it starts to kind of half of it sticks to your finger and it you can see the little cubes. I'm just being pedantic because grind is everything for this coffee and you don't want to get, the main thing is don't want to grind it too coarse because you'll get an under extraction and you'll have a really weak coffee that doesn't extract these beautiful flavors that you really, you really need to get out of this valuable coffee. So again, I just stick my finger there, it sticks like that and it looks like that. <laughs> okay, so you got the grind right. Now I'm going to empty my grinder and get all that old coffee out. I'll save that for a normal day when I'm not treating myself. So I'll pour this in. Make sure it's all out. And uh, I'll give it a bit of a bang to get, get coffee out of the ch chamber here. You know what? I'm also, because this is a very special coffee, I'm going to vacuum this thing. So I've got my, my home vacuum cleaner out. And I'm going full nerd. I'm just gonna suck out the grinds there. I'm also gonna make sure there's no coffee left in the grinder. And I'll put the grinder on. Look, there's still some left, so I'm gonna. You can hear there's no more coffee in there. Okay, right up there. There we are. Beauty. Okay, so there's no coffee that's gonna disturb my excellent coffee here. So I'm saving that for another day. There we are. Excellent. So now it's ready for the good coffee. So I've got, uh, your packet has 50 grams in it. Uh, we're gonna try and use around 48 grams for the plunger. We get two grams to flush it. So the two gram is there to, to flush the grinder so that you definitely don't have any of the leftover grinds from before. So I'm gonna pop that in. See here, it's like, there's only like, it's like 18 or 19 beans in there. And then I'm gonna grind that out. Empty. Yeah, you can smell it, that's, that's only good stuff. All right, now. We're ready to go. My water is at temperature, it's 95 degrees. Now I'm gonna put all the good coffee in. I'm gonna smell it as much as I can because it's so, you know, this is one of the best coffees in the world this year. So I'm gonna smell it before I put it in. It smells like, uh, like we were talking about before. It smells like uh, kind of like Reese's Pieces mixed with candy and other stuff. It's, it's a, some fruit, it's, it's a good coffee. Pour it in and now we're going to grind all that. There we go. So it's going to grind the whole thing out. It's about 48 grams. While it's grinding, I'm going to empty this out. I'm going to empty this. This is getting empty out. Okay, as dry as possible. Really hot, that's good. Okay. There's our coffee. Off. Shh, quiet. Okay, now. You can see how much coffee I have, just so you can show you. 48.1 grams, or 48.4 actually, so. That's good. And then I'm going to put it in to my preheated plunger, pour it all in, have a smell because it's dang, it's good. Yeah, it's really nice. That's, that's a big coffee. Whew. All right, it's all going really well and it smells beautiful. Okay, now we're going to add the water. Just add it, make sure it gets a big stir. So don't be too delicate with it, just pour it in to make sure it really stirs up the coffee. I, that's what I do. 
I mean, and, and other people have other ideas, but I find this gets the best results. Float right so that the foamy part hits the top there. Beauty. And yeah, it's pretty fresh, so there's a lot of foam. The water comes up to just below this silver part here, and it's still all going crazy. Um, but I'm just going to let it sit there uh, for four minutes. So I'll start my timer. Just four minutes, around four minutes. Okay, with the time, because this is very controversial, um, I just say at least four minutes. Okay, so you can do five minutes, but don't do three minutes and 50 seconds. It's got to be at least four minutes. You don't want to under extract this. You know, you're not going to get a cleaner cup, you'll get a weaker cup. And boy, when you're buying this kind of coffee, you want it to be as punchy as possible. And, and, and I know that when people put this in their plungers and stuff, they want to have impact in the cup. So I'm going to go at least four minutes on this because that's really important. The temperature is hot, which is good. It's maintaining the temperature. Right now, the temperature inside that is about, yeah, 94 degrees because we're not losing temperature. The, the, uh, the plunger was already preheated to about 94, 95 degrees anyway. So it maintains temperature because it's preheated. So that's good because so the extraction can happen over four to five minutes at ideal extraction temperature, which is around anywhere from 92 to 95 degrees. That's really, really important. So we're just gonna let it sit there. Don't touch it, don't you know, shake it or move it around. Just let it sit and smell it, of course. Yeah, it's, that's pretty nice. That's gonna take a little while. Um, so we'll, we'll probably uh, come back in three minutes <laughs> when it's ready and then we'll get to the next part. Okay, so it's been four minutes, just over four minutes. I'm not too stressed, because I say anywhere between four and six minutes is totally cool. So I'm not gonna be overly like rushing to do it exactly four minutes, even though there's pr probably a bunch of coffee nerds out there that will argue against me forever. Um, I just wanna make sure it's got full extraction. Now that it's been, been going for four to five minutes, I'm just gonna stir the top, just like, this is what we do in, in a quality control cupping. We uh, have this exact same thing, but in a smaller format, and it always comes out beautiful. So you've got this crust on top. Um, you want to just use a soup spoon and just and just break the crust on top. And you can smell it while you're doing it, and it's wow, it's big. That is that is big. It's nice. Wow, yeah, it's like it's incredibly punchy. And I'm just going to do a, a quick little stir on the in the middle, just to get some agitation in there. Because I know in cupping, we agitate the bottom slightly. Oh, man, that's gonna be a good coffee. Okay, so it's done that. You can see on top, it's, it's gone kind of like a, the same color as this table. So what's that pine wood color? <laughs> so it was more brown, but after stirring, you get this kind of pine wood color. And that's kind of this foam stuff left on top. And uh, I'm gonna, do now, I'm gonna peel that off because I've got a bit of time. And that'll make it just a little bit more tasty. Like, hey, you only got one batch, so let's make it amazing. So I'm just gonna put my spoons in and I'm just gonna peel it off. Don't worry, you're definitely not gonna hurt it. <laughs> not this coffee. Oh man. And then just, just, just peel off as much of that as you want. I peel it off till there's nothing else kind of floating. There you go. Uh, that's it. Okay, so that's done. And now, I'm actually gonna let it sit for a little bit longer. I'm not gonna touch it. Some people put the plunger on right away. I'm gonna treat it just like we do in, the, in, the, in, our, in our quality control labs. I'm just gonna let it sit and then put the plunge on uh, because it's really beautiful right now. And I don't wanna disturb it too much. And, and I'm also worried about temperature. This could take the temperature down. That's what us coffee guys are thinking in our minds. Like, oh no. You know, if I put this in, I'll lose three degrees of temperature of an extraction time. I want, it to, I want to get the most out of this coffee. So I'm just going to leave this off for even longer. And I'm going to come back. It's too hot to drink anyway. So don't worry. We're not missing time drinking it. It's like, it's probably around 85 to 88 degrees right now, which is just, if you drink that, you'll burn your esophagus. So we're just going to cool off even longer, you know, which is what you do with coffee anyway. We're going to come back. When our timer's reached around... 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna plunge softly, I'm gonna pour it, 
and then I'm going to drink it. Back soon. Okay, so we're back. It's, it's at 10 minutes and 30 seconds. I've actually brought my thermometer in so we can see what's happening. Uh, at 10 minutes, it's reaching 80 degrees, which is still really hot. I mean, drinkable is usually below 70 for most human beings on planet Earth. Uh, so we're still very, very hot. So don't worry, you're not missing anything. <laughs> you're, just, you're just missing getting burnt. <laughs> but it's ready to start like plunging and pouring. Uh, so what you do is just use your plunger, stick it on. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna give it a, a slight stir with my, just to, just to help it out. I mean, you don't have to, but I, that's what I would do in my house if I was serving this up. And then it's gonna plunge really softly. It should go down really easy because there's nothing, there's no grinds on top. They're all on the bottom. So it goes down really easy. That's, that's awesome. So I'm gonna plunge it down to around, yeah, halfway to a little bit further. You don't, have to, don't plunge all the way down. If you plunge all the way down, you, you actually like, you push against the grinds and some of the, and some of the uh, loose grinds come up through the filter and then you get a little bit of silt in your cup and you don't want that. So we push down to around there, and now I'm gonna pour. And when you pour, don't pour vigorously, just pour, you know? Because again, you don't want to stir up the bottom and have it coming up and into the cup. So I've got my, I've got my mug. My mug's at room temperature, which is good, uh, because I'm expecting if I pour, pour about up to there for me, um, the cup will absorb a lot of temperature, and we should have drinking temperature really quickly, and then I can finally taste this coffee oven looking forward to tasting for so long. So I'm just gonna pour it in halfway. This is how we drink our coffee at home. That's half, and then this is for, for my wife. There you go, Lou. There you are. And then, just kind of a smell, of course. Yeah, it smells pretty good. And uh, just, usually I start drinking, but I just wanna show you what temperature it is after it's been in the mug for a little bit. See, it's already absorbing a lot of temperature, this thick mug. We're down to 69.0, 68.8. It's going down right now. It's almost at drinking temperature, which is beautiful. It means we get to start drinking it. Like this is, this is now at 67, 66. So this is the temperature of, a, of your typical latte, which is ideal t drinking temperature. And uh, now we're down to 64. So that's gonna be pretty, pretty good to taste now. So I have a, have a little sip. That's because I filled it only halfway and it means that all the uh, heat has been dispersed over this kind of cool cup and uh, and even out the temperature to a, a cool 66 to 65 degrees which is sipping temperature. So now I get to sip it finally. Jeez. Mmm. Yeah. All right. That's that's good. I yeah, really got the, uh, the acidity in there. Um, it's punchy, you know, it's coming out really well. Um, yeah, you're getting some of that um, big blueberries um, and boysenberries, a bit of candy. I find when it's very hot, more you get the acidity and uh, the initial flavors. But then when you cool it down even more, then you start getting all the, uh, the more complex flavors. But it's certainly a, an impactful coffee right from the start. Just gotta check out what temperature is now. Now we're getting down to the 50s. So it's at 56 degrees. Oof, that's a good temperature. All right, I might try it again at 56 degrees. Mm -mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that really, that kind of blackberry boysenberry is coming through a lot now, which is good. Plus the impact of the coffees there. And the florals are starting to come through a bit as well. Yeah, it's starting to really turn out well. It's really opening up as it cools. Again, you know, as it cools, it gets better and better with, as with all amazing coffees. But this one's really coming into its own. And it's at 15 minutes since we started. Um, it's tasting great. Uh, here's where I'd hope that my guests would start drinking their coffee because I know that they'd start getting the good results. And I'd be like, phew, you know, I, I told them it was good coffee. It's gotta be good coffee. 
Mm, yeah. Yeah, and the berries are all coming out now. And yeah, that's turning into a really lovely cup. So I'll, I'll leave the rest of the tasting to you. Uh, but thanks for joining us. Thanks for buying this coffee and supporting our, our ultra premium coffee buying program, which we just love doing. I mean, it makes my kitchen smell fantastic. So uh, enjoy. So I've had a first couple of sips, but then, uh, you know, you, you've only got half a cup, so you're going to get through it pretty quickly. I always wait till I'm about, about one third down and then I add more. And I find I actually get even more out of the coffee on the second pour. So pour, pour to about around half to two thirds full. And uh, something about like just kind of stirring it or something when it pours on the second time just really puts even more into the cup. So on that second pour out, that's when it really comes alive. So if you're pouring it for your friends, I'd say pour a bit and then pour one, then go back and pour the next one a couple minutes later, just for the true nerd in you trying to get it right. But that's delicious. It's really opening up. You're getting a lot of jasmine. Again, the black boysenberries are coming out. Um, it's really, it's really a good coffee. So enough. I'll let you enjoy it. Cheers.